another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back uh, with another edition of Quick Hits. Uh, we're going to get into uh, a signing by Eddie Hearn today. He signed with Hitchens, uh, which I think is a really, really excellent signing. It's an interesting signing because not only that he comes from um, you know the PBC, the, the, the money team size. I want to get into all that. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow Quick Hits on all, uh, follow 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you th- uh, th- uh, every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. All right. Um, please also subscribe to our Elegy Health Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Uh, it's near and dear to our heart. Please like, share, uh, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, help us bring awareness to autism research and recovery. All right. Richardson Hitson, uh, 14-0 prospect from Brooklyn, New York, really sharp boxer, uh, jabber, mover, a uh, good defensive fighter, comes from that Mayweather gym. He cites Mayweather as his biggest uh, kind of influence. You can see a lot of that in him. He fights. He'll fight out of the Philly shell at times. He'll fight out of the high guard. Uh, he can stalk a little bit with out of the high guard. There's a lot of I'm not saying he's like Floyd Mayweather. What I'm saying is you can see that influence in him. And for him to leave now Mayweather and go to Eddie Hearn is fascinating. Um, it's fascinating for a couple of reasons. A, he's leaving the kind of guy who shaped and molded him, that took him uh, from Showbox to these elite levels. He's got good wins uh, over Mendez. He's got good wins over Malik Hawkins. He's got good wins. Um, I think he's a, a an A-plus prospect. I, I do think he can get to a world title in relatively short order. He does have things he, he needs to fix. Um, he gets a little stationary sometimes. Um, he, he doesn't really throw in high volume with the right hand. He's gone away from the body. Uh, he needs to go to the body. He needs to break people down. I do think, despite just six knockouts and his 14 wins, I think he's got good sting on his right hand. I, I think he can crack with his right hand. He doesn't throw it enough. But when he does, he throws it well, just like he doesn't throw to the body enough. When he does, he does it well. Early in his career, he was an excellent body puncher. And uh, you look at the Hawkins fight, you look at the Mendes, he's kind of, as he's fought better competition, he's gone away from it. He needs to stop, he needs to go back down to the body. Uh, But I I think he's he's an A-plus prospect. Um, and I, I think 140 pounds for a while was kind of a Passover division. It wasn't lightweight. It wasn't welterweight. It was that thing, kind of pygmy thing in the middle. Um, that's not, you know, you got TV more there. You got maybe Ryan Garcia heading there. You got maybe Devin Haney heading there. Um, you got Josh Taylor there. Obviously you got pro Gray there. So you're going to have a lot of good names. Um, Ramirez is there. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly he's moved. He's moved along. To me, what he did last year against Hawkins was really, really impressive. I like Louis Hawkins. I thought he was a good fighter. I thought it would be a good fight. And I know one of the judges had it 96-94. That is an egregious scorecard in that fight. Uh, Richardson Hitchens dominated that fight. He schooled him. He tooled on him. He was in complete control. The first round, not much happened. From that point on, maybe – Maybe uh, Hawkins won one round. Maybe. So I'd like to see him fight Sabriel Matias, but again, now now we're on a promotional issue. So is the goal to keep him at 140? I would imagine so. I can't see him going up to 47 and leaving. He's too big to go down to 35. So I, my, my guess is 40 is where he's going to stay. 40 is a good spot to stay. <clears throat> I just don't know if it makes the most sense to stay there with Matro, to go to Matro. If you're going to stay at 140, you know, we talked to uh, Eddie Hearn about signing Crawford when Crawford was a free agent. And he said to us, to for what fight? Right. And we said, well, Virgil Ortiz. And, you know, he's like, that's not my fighter. And uh, why would, you know, okay, fine. Um, 
Right, but his point was, I, I don't have a ton of fights for Terrence Crawford. Right? I, I kind of feel that way about um, Hitchens. I, I think Hitchens is on the verge. I, I think Hitchens is a, is a top-level, elite-level prospect. So I'm surprised he's gone away from Mayweather, and I'm surprised that he decided to go with Eddie Hearn. Mm-hmm. It is interesting that he can get American fighters, young fighters, fighters from that Mayweather influence to sign with him. To sign with him without guarantee of a big fight. That's a multi-fight deal. From what I've read, I, I don't know about the money involved in it. I, I can't confirm that. But it's an interesting move, in my opinion. Um, one I, I didn't see coming. Um, he's got – Eddie Hearn has a 140-pound prospect on his side of the ocean, on his side of the pond. Dalton Smith, who he's one of his prize prospects, big ticket seller. Um, I, I don't know. Again, he's got Taylor. You know, he, he, I don't know what the plan is. Um, there, there's, there's a ton of good prospects at 140. Pierce O'Leary, Irish fighter, Omar Juarez, right? Um, Early in their development, Brandon Lee. None of them are really on the side of, of so he's not gonna match him with another prospect because he doesn't have the prospect. He does have Josh Taylor. Is that something Eddie Hearn is thinking? To me, that would be aggressive. Um does he think, you know, again, and, and this fight with Josh Taylor and Jack Catterall is now, I I don't know, it's on the outs. It may not happen. I don't really know. They said they can't get a venue for the date they wanted anywhere in the UK. That seems suspicious to me. That seems like nonsense. You can't get a venue anywhere in the UK. There's a population of 60 million people, whatever, a huge country. There's not one venue. You know, it's like saying there's no venue in Texas. Maybe you can't get Cowboy Stadium that day, but there are tons of venues you could put a fight if you wanted to put it in Texas. Say, I can't get a venue. Seems like a ridiculous excuse to me, but I don't know. Um, so that Taylor Catterall fight may not come off, at least as it's scheduled. Um, how quickly does he, you know, I, I, me, I, I think his days. Taylor's days at 140 or, or nearing an end. We'll see. He's always been massively big and long and tall to me. Like Hooker, he's the same height as Hooker, but bigger and he's stronger. So I, and Hooker is now missing 47. So I, I don't see how long Taylor still stays there. If not, what fights does he really have for Richardson Hitchens? Again, I think Hitchens is an excellent fighter, but you go through the top names. At 140 pounds. And, and even if we put someone Haney, Garcia, um, and you put those guys there. Sandor Martin, you, you want to see that fight? You know, it's a pet, a Pedraza. They're not natural fighters. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Gary Antoine Russell, another prospect. And, and, and I, to me, when I was naming the prospect, when I, when I was naming Dalton Smith, Omar Juarez, Brendan Lee, those guys are prospects to me. Gary Russell, Antoine Russell, Gary Antoine Russell, is a pro, is is a contender to me. Um, so I, I put him, uh, I mark him a little differently. You got Barbosa, top ranked guy, right? Matias, um, Montana Love is the other name. He's got Montana Love, um, and Dalton Smith. I don't think that highly of Montana Love. I I, I think. But Hitchens is about 10 times better than him. Um, there's also another prospect, Jeremiah uh, Nicholas Ponce. Um, is he a top ranked guy? Is, is he a. Uh, I, I got to look that up. That other name has just dawned on me. That that may be a, a matchroom guy. Um, he beat Lewis Ritson, and, and Lewis Ritson was a 35 and 40 pounder who, who was highly touted. Not too long ago, uh, Eddie Hearn, by Eddie Hearn in Matchroom, um, he, he knocked Richardson out. Richardson's got a couple losses now. Um, 
So th there are a couple of names. Montana Love. Um, but I, none of those are going to get him into a world title fight. Um, so I, I don't know what the plan is. It is an interesting move to see Eddie Hearn could get this done. Now it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. What does Eddie Hearn have from? What does Eddie Hearn do with the next? Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with that? Richard, Richardson Hitchens. I always want to call him Richard Hitchinson. Richardson Hitchens is an A-level prospect. He's, he's an excellent prospect. Um, does this make – were you surprised by it? And then what do you think is next for him? Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh Please subscribe on all forms of social media. Please follow us on all forms of social media. Texas uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. It is September 29th, 2022. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.